Thanks for joining us and welcome to yet another edition of the Catholic View for Women produced by EWTN, the Global Catholic Television Network. And it's a program with news and views for women and about women from a truly Catholic perspective. It's good to be with you. I host a talk show on EWTN radio called Catholic Connection. Again, my name is Teresa Tamio. With me, my co-host Astrid Bennett Gutierrez from Los Angeles Pregnancy Services and Hispanics for Life. And of course, Janet Morana, who is also very familiar to us here at EW EWTN through her great work at Priest Your Life and the Silent No More Awareness Campaign. Now, right. today's show, mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about something that is, um, well, let's be honest, it's a topic that doesn't get spoken about enough, no, especially in church and pro-life <laughs> no. circles. And Janet, uh, I'm going to talk to both of you because you're both experts in, in the pro-life community. Right. And I think it's interesting that we are such a pro-life people, right. and yet this issue of miscarriage... Doesn't... It's not being addressed. We, it's not well, being addressed. We don't talk about it like a pro-life people. You know, and these are well-meaning Catholics who will just say to a woman who's lost a child in miscarriage, uh, oh, well, you know, um, that's nature taking its course. There was probably something wrong with the baby, and oh, it's best anyway. You can try again. Try again. Oh, it was early, don't worry. Oh, it was early on, mm -hmm. you know, so... The question, it was early on, as a pro-life community, as we say, we respect life from the moment of conception to natural death, okay? So even if it's early on, six weeks, what's the difference to a mother losing a six-week unborn child as opposed to a six-month born child? Absolutely it's her nothing. Child. It's still, it's her child. She's a mother from the moment of conception. The doctor tells her in the office, uh, you know, the baby has died and we now have to take care of things. She's mourning the loss of that child, and yet we as a pro-life community don't act like there was a loss. We try to kind of hush-hush it up and push it aside. Absolutely. And I think we have to really have more pro-life language about this. You know, if, if that six-month born child, what would you be doing? They probably would have a, a funeral mass, a wake service, a burial. You would be getting a mass card. They would name the child. Exactly. Well, for the six weeks unborn child, we should be doing the same thing. But why is that so too. prevalent in the pro-life community when we're so sensitive to the child in the womb? Why do you think? I think we're waking up, uh, Teresa and Janet. You know that I do presentations with the Hispanic community in California, other states, and other countries. And uh, it's interesting. When I present on abortion and contraception and the evils of these two things, uh, women will come up to me afterwards with tears and, and sorrow because they had a miscarriage. And for the first time, are they seeing that their baby has been humanized by the explanation of fetal development and that it had a soul and that it was it was a baby. And so they're coming up to me to say they never had a chance to grieve, that right. it was dismissed, that they ended up at an abortion clinic after their miscarriage. And all these things, I think, wow. as, a, as a church, mm -hmm. as a pro-life community, we have to address, we have to recognize that there is a grieving process that can be in many ways similar to what post-abortive women are going through because there is a loss of a child. Is it because it's such, abortion is such a huge issue and absolutely. it affects so yes, many areas? Absolutely. It's like this giant mm -hmm. octopus with you know all these connections and tentacles right. sucking the life out of our community with right. a million abortions a year. So is it because the abortion issue is so big that well, because by abortion, we've dehumanized the child. We've dehumanized the unborn child. And even mm -hmm. if you can say, well, I am pro-life, mm -hmm. the, the onslaught of the de dehumanizing of the child is so intense that you just kind of want to push it on. And I also think people are uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like if someone's had a miscarriage. But we're not uncomfortable about talking as a pro-life people, the baby no. in the womb. No, That's we're not. aborted. But so for what? some reason, about the loss of that unborn child, for some reason, they want to sweep it under the rug brush it away. We feel uncomfortable about yeah, it. We, we do, we don't want to hurt. We don't want to hurt uh, the person, but right. we have to speak up. And I think we cannot ex expect um, other ministries to do it. I think it's the pro-life community, the church, um, that has to step up and, and in fact is doing so. Um, in in, uh, in Los Angeles, our Rachel's Vineyard retreat in Spanish has created a special retreat just for couples that have lost uh, babies to miscarriage oh, because okay. if they don't yeah. do it, then uh, you know, who else That's is right. going to do it? We have right. to step up. Yeah, because it is a loss. Well, you know, to get a perspective from uh, actual women who've lost a baby to miscarriage, recently I was at a women's conference and um, I just kind of asked, you know, if anyone would like me, just give me your feelings of how you mm -hmm. felt about that yes. miscarriage, would you be willing to be interviewed? So uh, I interviewed two ladies, one's from, uh, Dale is from Canada and Colleen from upstate New York. So let's take a look at what these women said about their experience to miscarriage. I had a miscarriage my fourth pregnancy 
And actually it happened so quickly that I was in the doctor's office and he said that I needed to have surgery right away to take care of this problem that the baby was stuck in my tube. Um, and it was just so quick and I didn't even really comprehend what was going on. Um, I felt a little bit of relief when I got to the hospital and my nurse was a Catholic with me and I knew her from my parish, but um, she really didn't know how to handle it, didn't know the right things to say. And she was just saying like, oh, suck it up, people have DNCs all the time. You know, this happens, people lose babies left and right. And it didn't make me feel any better. Um, it actually made me more upset. Um, and then afterwards I found that it was a big stumbling block for my husband and I because we really didn't want to talk about it. It was, we didn't know where to turn, what to do. Um, and it was actually when I was talking with my parish priest one day, I had went to my faith, went to church, um, and I was praying and he said to me, did you name the baby? And I was like, no, I didn't think to name the baby. And just naming the baby was such a huge step um, for the two of us, it's something we did together. And after we did name the baby, it like gave him an identity. Yes, I've had uh, five miscarriages. And um, for the most part, I felt like society as a whole uh, did not treat it as if it was a real loss. Uh, many, many people, including people in the church, told me, oh, it's okay, you know, you'll go on and you'll have a, you'll have a child down the road. Everything will be okay. So it was kind of uh, disregarded. Um, so for a long time, it was extremely hard to deal with because there really wasn't anybody that was acknowledging that it was a loss of a child. I was in a Catholic hospital, and um, looking back in retrospect, it, it was very difficult to deal with because I was, first of all, put on a ward with the women who had just had newborn babies. Um, I was put in a room, in a private room at the end of the hall where I was totally alienated. Um, the nurses, uh, I believe, I'm also a nurse, so I believe the nurses had a very difficult time dealing with it because they didn't know what to say to me. So I was kind of left alone in my room a lot of the time to deal with this. Um, and uh, when I left the hospital on discharge, there was no real setup plan for me. Um, you were told, you know, oh, I'm sorry about your loss, but you'll go on to have more children, you know. Um, so yeah, there was really nothing to help me concretely deal with the grief that I was going through. No, there was no um, a concrete plan about the fact that your child was a real child who needed to be memorialized or buried or there was really no discussion about that topic. Years later down the road, um, I learned uh, about a program that was being offered at the hospital. And how I found out about it was one of the nurses, apparently, that was on the ward that I was on at the time I had my miscarriages, she apparently miscarried um, and uh, personally went through that, that um, trauma and realized that, hey, this really is a baby that I've lost. And she started a beautiful program um, that was a memorial to the child that was lost. And I went to the opening of that program. And it was, it was a beautiful program. And I was very uh, proud of the fact that it was being started. And the nurses who were on that ward actually came to me that day and apologized for their lack of uh, compassion at the time, which was, um, consoling to me and they actually gave me um, part of the program they gave me the little box and the envelopes uh, that would have been given to me had I been there at the time they start this program so it was quite consoling to know that this was being started and that women were um, women's issues uh, the issue of miscarriage was finally being addressed as um, the loss of a real child powerful stories and you can see by their witness how sad and devastated and impacted they were. It was a child to them, they had that loss and they just were really reaching out for more of, uh, help from the community to recognize that loss. You know, it's interesting because in, we always talk about in, in the pro-life community and it's often a discussion, Janet, when you're on my program every week about how you know, it's it's not just when someone goes, a woman goes for an abortion. It's not just something you 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 walk out of that abortion right. mill and you're fine and you're skipping back to the car. It, it's usually, and maybe the women won't feel the effects for a while, either emotionally or physically, but eventually it takes its toll. And we never minimize that experience because it's it's a traumatic experience. And yet, 
we're sometimes flippant in the pro-life community about the miscarriage. miscarriage. And, and what you have to understand is the, for the women who had a miscarriage, very often these are women who, you, you know, you're trying to get pregnant, they want to have a child. I mean, we know some women who've had mm. three, four, five, six miscarriages in the attempt to, to start a family. Mm. And so each one of those, those, those losses is they lost a child. You know, Absolutely. and but yet we don't respond with that kind of emotional support, spiritual support yes. for them, uh, and it's very sad. But I think we have to focus too, as a pro-life community, like I said earlier, on our language. Our response, mm -hmm. when you first hear that that person lost that child in miscarriage, can be the thing to either help her in her healing or drive her deeper into her pain. Absolutely. Because you're not acknowledging it. Even Colleen, uh, who is a faithful Catholic woman, um, she lost her fourth child to miscarriage. And she was lost. She didn't know how to handle it. Right. Um, being a faithful Catholic <laughs> woman, knowing um, that it, it was a child, thank God for her priest at her parish who acknowledged the humanity right. of her baby. Right. Um, and then, you know, he did a whole uh, memorial service for right. the baby. Right, he suggested to and, name, and the, name, child. The, baby. name yes. the child. Name the child. But how many priests, God love them, because they're so busy and torn yeah, in so absolutely. many different directions have that have that proper that ability or that training that where they can do that right you know yeah. that that's a you know they're, they're pulled that's why it's important for us to step up to the plate again exactly. as a, you know help. part of the pro-life community help yeah. them encourage yeah. them and also with our pro-life uh, retreats we can find a way to address um, this hum the, the humanity of these children and the loss of these parents because they are children that have been lost and they mm -hmm. they have siblings um, and it is a generation that is lost even mm -hmm. if it's not an abortion um, it's part of the work that we're doing to build a culture of life yeah well I think most parents you know, have a bereavement group, and yes. I think this is a challenge to those groups to say that's an interesting yes. point. You know, I never that thought they of that. need yeah. to bring this in, in as another because most people think of the bereavement group as saying, "Oh, you lost a spouse, or or a born or child, a child, or a child, or a grandparent, or a parent." But those bereavement groups also have to cover miscarriage because that is the loss of a child. Exactly. And I think this is you know we're going to talk a little bit more about um, some resources later on in the program. But I think that's what anyone who's in a runs a bereavement group, this is a challenge to you uh, to really deep, 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 dig deeper and find out how to cover miscarriage and, and in those groups and welcome these women. And to encourage these groups uh, in the parish to also work with pro-life doctors to help these women be treated compassionately, sensitively, and, and ethically when right. they have a miscarriage they don't want to end up at an abortion clinic get, That's getting right. a DNC. They want to be with pro-life doctors that will be sensitive well, to what's happening. And you heard how Dale said how she was treated. She was put on the maternity ward with other women who had children, and the nurses kind of like we didn't even know what, oh, well, what we're not, do we don't know what her. to do with her or what to say to well, her. Well, the so pro-life community, community needs to work with the medical community as well. We're going exactly. to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about this language of love and what we can do differently and better in the pro-life community and in general to help women and families who are dealing with a miscarriage. And don't forget, we're going to have a lot of great resources again on our website at the Catholic View for Women. Com. I'm Teresa Tamio, along with Astrid Bene Gutierrez and Janet Miranda, the co-hosts of The Catholic View for Women. Stay tuned. We'll be right back to wrap up our discussion regarding miscarriage and the language of love. Thanks so much for staying tuned to this edition of Catholic View for Women, where we're talking about, as we said earlier, something that doesn't get spoken of enough in our church communities and in the pro-life community. We're talking about miscarriages and how we need to really adopt and embrace a language of love. We're going to have some tips on our website, catholicviewforwomen.com, maybe some do's and don'ts on, on the language that you can use if it's you know still a little bit uncomfortable for you. But I want to get back to our discussion with Janet and Astra because they're both pro-life leaders and have been at this for a while. And you both have come in contact with many women. You just saw the interviews that Janet did before the break who have experienced miscarriage and who haven't felt now they're starting to see that there are programs available, but right. we're coming into our own mm -hmm. with this, aren't we, mm -hmm. Astrid, Absolutely. in terms of, okay. I think so, and um, I'm blessed to belong to a very faithful pro-life uh, parish, um, St. Peter Chanel Hawaiian Gardens, and I love speaking with the families there, and the couples that have experienced miscarriage, um, they have 
peace with, with the fact that the child has been lost. Um, they love that child. And when you ask them, how many children did you, do you have? They say, I have five children and one, one in, in heaven. heaven. Well, and they that. say it yeah. with a smile because there's love there. And that, that should be encouraged in every parish mm -hmm. and that should be spoken of during the homilies because right. it is a reality for many couples. Well, and that comes down to, like we said earlier, naming of the child. Yes. You know? But um, there's a wonderful couple that uh, I've gotten to know through our pro life ministry. Uh, and they've, out of their loss, their name is uh, Sean and uh, Canberra Malone. Yes. And because of they've suffered two miscarriages, and they found there was just nothing in the, uh, going, you know, in their area. And along with their parish priest, they started a program called Back in His Arms Again Ministry. Beautiful. And it's a wonderful ministry. They, they have a website which we'll, we'll cite later. And really what they do is they take you step by step. From the moment, really what happens to most women, you find out that you've lost that child usually in the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. And usually the next step is a scheduling a hospital visit a day or two later, you know, to take care of the situation. Well, that's those two days time is where you have to act and act expeditiously because based on the doctor or the hospital you're going to, how they treat that, the remains of your child is gonna to be totally different. And you need to contact sometimes the funeral director in your town, your parish priest, and you say to them, I want the remains of my child, even if it's at six weeks, even if it's six weeks, I want the remains of my child because we're going to have a burial. Because otherwise, just like an abortion, yes. products of conception, they are discarded, those children, as medical waste. And so you almost have to be proactive to make sure. Don't assume that the doctor is going to take all these steps. You have to. So you usually have a day or two to plan this. Mm -hmm. And on uh, the Sean uh, Camber's uh, website, they have the steps to take. And um, you know, recently, uh, sadly enough, uh, my daughter's uh, godmother called me with a similar miscarriage news. Her son's uh, wife uh, was expecting twins, 15 weeks. Oh. And uh, on her do same thing, doctor's visit was oh. told that the baby's uh, heartbeats had both stopped oh. and that they were gonna have to obviously you know, take care of the situation. Well, again, they had a two-day window because he was scheduling them for two days later. And my friend called me immediately and said, okay, Janet, <laughs> you're the pro-life expert here. What can we do? Right. They don't want, they want to have a, a burial. They want to take, so I walked them through. I had a local uh, funeral director on Staten Island. This was on Staten Island and I got in touch with him. Uh, and they, they have a beautiful place in the cemetery, Resurrection Cemetery in Staten Island where they have the cemetery of the unborn for miscarried uh, children. And uh, we made all the arrangements and, and acted expeditiously, the doctor was fine, and uh, the experts were there and ready once they delivered the babies. And, uh, you know, uh, and they, they actually the priest was there and they blessed them. And then uh, the funeral director took the children and uh, the mother gave her a day or two recovering, you know, from the procedure. And then they had a beautiful uh, funeral service and burial uh, at, at the cemetery. What do you do if, if you don't know what to say to a friend and that friend that you know had a miscarriage and you could tell it's affecting her? but you don't want to hurt her feelings and say maybe you need you know to go talk to someone how would you i mean in the language of love maybe we can come up with some tips for that too because i would think that would be important right. to lead someone to the right place if they need yeah. that assistance well i think first you have to just like identify like even when they say what do you say to a woman who's had an abortion i think you have to acknowledge the fact that they've had a loss and that you you have a level of understanding to that you know so i would first express my condolences right. you know like we were saying earlier the humanity of that child and i'm so sorry how are you feeling? How are you doing? You know, ask concern for her. And usually most women who, if they are being troubled, they're, they're gonna open up to you because you're first giving a positive okay. response. You're, you're recognizing, you're just asking you're how are you feeling? You're acknowledging their feelings. I mean, just think right. about how are you feeling? Think about all the people who don't have miscarriages. Has anyone asked that person? No, they, they do that defensive stuff like, oh, well, you you'll know. You'll be oh, fine. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Kids. Later. Try later. Yeah. So now, if she's feeling horrible, is she gonna open up to you? No, but if you say to her, I'm sorry for your loss, you know, uh, do you need anything? Can I do anything for you? Um, how are you feeling? Those are all affirming her feelings. And I think at that point, she would probably open up to you. And letting mm. her share. Exactly. And acknowledging her, her sorrow and, and not trying to give an opinion. And mm -hmm. something that I've heard also that's, that's very disturbing is the accusing as well. When somebody says they lost a child, sometimes it happens in the Hispanic community is, well, what were you doing? Were you lifting heavy things? Were you not taking oh, care of yourself? Okay. So women carry this guilt sometimes that they were responsible for the death of their child, which is a horrible thing right. um, for them to go to. But 
go through, but I think that they do have to speak about it. So um, when they know we're in the pro-life community, I think they, they naturally gravitate towards us to share because they know that we work defending the unborn, right. and so they, they know that we, would, we, we understand that it's a yeah. baby, and mm -hmm. in the very least, we should, just, we should listen to them. Right. How do you handle that in the Rachel's, uh, in, in the retreat, though? Because I would imagine there's, there, um, you know, they may feel somewhat um, overwhelmed or not quite as, I don't want to say important, but not taken as seriously because, mm -hmm. as you said, the guilt from an abortion mm -hmm. is different. Is different than mm -hmm. the feelings you have from a miscarriage. Well, when the so how do you handle that? Well, in that context, they, yes. first of all, they wouldn't sign up a woman who's had lost a miscarriage with women who've had an abortion. Like mm -hmm. like that's Astrid different. said, that's usually what they'll do is they'll take that same model of the scriptural exercises and the things which will work in that taking you through the grief and the bereavement. But you would have to have a separate. A retreat just for women of miscarriage because it's a totally there, different there's, thing. There's feelings right. there because the women who have lost a miscarriage, they're going to look at the women who had abortion, and they're going to say, "Well, listen, we wanted our baby, you didn't." So there's this like, you know, they just kind of tension, kinda tension that they mm -hmm. really wouldn't be, work well to work through the process. It's the grief nature process. Of it's situation. different nature. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't mix the two the two groups. They would be separate retreats, but the process would still work. Are they doing way. more of, of these types of Rachel's Vineyard retreats in terms of the miscarriages? I think it's beginning to open up to. more. Or, you know, just like I can remember um, the idea of people feeling the loss of children from contraception. Now, I first had that experience myself personally on a Rachel's Vineyard retreat a number mm. of years ago. And when I when I kind of opened up about it, it was like a pioneer because I opened it up, <laughs> a can of worms, so to speak. But then they brought it up at the Rachel's Vineyard conference and, and the leaders started talking about it's coming up more and more on our retreats that women are talking about this feel of loss. But again, a woman who's had a loss through contraception, say taking the pill, and feels that grief like I have, as opposed to a woman who's lost a child to a miscarriage or even abortion, there, there are different levels, different, of different, levels, right. different levels, mm -hmm. different emotions. And I think you kind of have to keep that that in mind with it, you know, when you're talking about it. And I want to share as well that um, you know the abortion industry is so so powerful, and in California, I mean, they're always wanting to pass new laws now to have um, non-physicians do abortions oh, in California, crazy. things like that. So what's happening, and people have to recognize, is that sometimes some physicians are not taking the time to really examine their patients and their unborn children and being quickly um, you know, sent to the abortion clinics. Uh, we really recommend that women get a second opinion from a pro-life doctor when, when they're giving a, an adverse diagnosis because That's right. we have found a lot of Hispanic women that are some of the most vulnerable uh, people uh, given a diagnosis that the baby is gonna die or is dead and then they're taken to one of our pro-life doctors and they find out the baby's just fine. There was nothing going on and the pro-life doctor is able to save the child. Wow. So now we're seeing yeah. how the abortion industry really is attacking uh, every single person. Every, I, I want to say that every pregnancy can be a crisis pregnancy if you're in the hands of a doctor who is not really espousing mm -hmm. pro-life values. So right. we need to encourage women to really take hold of their um, their well-being, their children's health, and also when us in the pro-life community to um, provide these resources for the moms for their unborn children's health and also for healing. Um, it's going to be more and more an issue, I right. think. To find a pro-life doctor, <clears throat> uh, you know, that that is just so important for all women. That is. Understand. I mean, I, I don't care if, if you're of childbearing age or not. I mean, you have to have someone who's on the page with you. That's right. Mm -hmm. We were just talking to um, some of our uh, women friends here at EWTN who, who have told me time and time again about the pressure they're under when they go in to see their doctor and automatically it's always about the pill. Push right. the pill, pill, Push pill for pill. everything. You right. know, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, you know, um, to go back to the idea of when they lost, lose the child, yes. uh, no, a few years back, Father Pavona and I had an experience. We were in North Carolina uh, giving talks, and a couple came up to us after the talk and said, you know, we lost a child to miscarriage. Uh, we named her. Her name is Felicity. And she was six weeks when we lost her, but oh, we, had, mm -hmm. we had a burial. And we her, her headstone, we ordered one, it has just come in, and we want to have a blessing. Would you, we would be so privileged if you could come and do the blessing of the headstone. So Father Pavone and I went, and they had the whole family there. Their, their born children, mm -hmm. their, grand, the, their parents, and, and the couple. And it was beautiful, and uh, he blessed the stone of Felicity's headstone, and there it said right on her tombstone, six weeks you know, of age, unborn child, and, 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 and the date that they lost the child. And I said, what a witness this was. Absolutely. Because the, the, the children, the youngest was maybe three years old, and the oldest one was maybe eight. And they were all like blessing themselves and, and praying for their little sister, Felicity. And I said, see, that's what we need to be as a, as a church community, is to recognize that these unborn children, when lost tragically, 
exactly like this. Need to be recognized and give a proper burial. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The yeah. pain of um, not even knowing where your child ended up, that they could have been in the trash, they could have been uh, used uh. for uh, some sort of scientific investigations, or, you know, so many things happen with fetal tissue, so to not even know where your child ended up, you know, right. it's just tremendous. So mm -hmm. the more that we can talk about this, share these resources, and everyone listening to this program, watching the show, can talk about it, share it, put it in your parish bulletin, put this resource on your parish bulletin. Well, so this was one of the shows, you know, mm -hmm. many of the shows that we're doing in, in, in the full-fledged series now are direct because of, of, of viewer our viewer, input. Yes, viewer that's input, right. and they talk to us about this issue of, of a miscarriage, miscarriage, and it comes up a lot with the radio program, too, they want to address it, we hear it from mm -hmm. our yeah. listeners. Great discussion, ladies, and again, I want to encourage folks to go to our website, The Catholic View for Women, because we will have on there tips for learning this, what we're calling the language of love. Uh, you know, we are so, I think, done such a great job in the pro-life community mm -hmm. about dealing with, with women and men who are post-abortive. I think we have some work to do in this area in terms mm -hmm. of miscarriage, but at least as Astrid and, and Janet have said, because they're both um, on the front lines in the pro-life community, th I think we are starting to, to come into our own with that area. Uh, there's a couple of um, websites, Janet, we know you mentioned uh, backinhisarmsagain.com. Right. Yeah, right? this will be in their homework. Right. It's going to uh, backinhisarmsagain.com. And also, I don't want to neglect to uh, mention the Elizabeth Ministry International, which also has part of their ministry, some work they're doing on miscarriage, and that's elizabethministry.com. Those resources will be on our website for your homework. Great. Thanks to both of you for all of your great work in the pro-life community. I'm Teresa Tamio, co-host of The Catholic View for Women, along with Astrid Bennett Gutierrez and Janet Marana. And you can find out more about their work in the pro-life community. All of that is on our website at catholicviewforwomen.com. Thanks so much for joining us. Stay tuned, and we'll be coming up, I'm sure, very, very soon with another new edition of The Catholic View for Women right here on EWTN. And we'll see you next time.